The Sahara estate in Saxonwald, Johannesburg was a compound of at least four mansions and home to the Gupta brothers of UP Saharanpur. Ajay, Rajesh and Atul. All was fine till 2018 when they left South Africa for Dubai after their over two decade long spectacular run ran into trouble. Their aura was pierced when the brothers were accused of breaching South Africa's national security by getting a chartered jet airways flight to land at the Waterkloof Air Force Base on April 30th, 2013. Instead of official guests, a commission of inquiry later found the plane contained 200 guests from India for a wedding in the family. A public uproar forced the family to issue an apology. Cut to June 2019, the Himalayan resort town of Auli was the venue of yet another over-the-top family wedding. The sons of two of the three Gupta brothers got married at an altitude of 9,500 feet. Notorious for leaving a political mess in their wake in South Africa, the Gupta brothers left a mess here too and were later fined for littering when 22 tons of garbage was reportedly left behind. For the past four years, the Gupta brothers have been living the life of moneyed fugitives in Dubai, despite Interpol issuing red notices against them and the US and the UK declaring them persona non grata. The tide turned against them last year when South Africa signed an extradition treaty with the UAE setting the stage for the eventual arrest of Rajesh and Atul, while the third brother, Ajay, remains free. The three brothers migrated to South Africa in 1993 from Saharanpur, starting off by setting up a company called Sahara Computers. The brothers slowly expanded their business into various sectors, including mining, air travel, energy, technology and media. In 2016, Atul Gupta was listed as the seventh richest South African with a personal wealth valued at over $700 million. A judicial inquiry into state graft spanning more than three years detailed the close relation between the brothers and President Zuma. Zuma's son was a director of Sahara Computers and was involved in the family's other companies. Zuma's third wife, Bongi Gema, and one of his daughters had also been employees of the Guptas. The Gupta family is also alleged to have lobbied against ministers who meddled with the family's business interests and got them sacked. The inquiry found that at least 500 billion rand and 32 billion dollars was stolen during Zuma's nine-year rule. The Gupta brothers and Zuma have always denied the allegations. The arrest has led to fresh news reports of the close family links of the Guptas with the new promoter of Jet Airways, Murari Jalan. And while Jet Airways may soon take to the air again, the Guptas have had a hard landing. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. Joining us on the show, Rajesh Sundaram, consultant, Business Today TV, and Erin Marisa Bates, a journalist, Business Day South Africa. Thank you both for being with us. Erin, a big development for South Africa, isn't it, with the Gupta brothers? Uh, they ran away in 2018, had refused to appear before South African courts or agencies. Quite right. They were very dramatic events after former President Jacob Zuma stepped down on the eve of Valentine's Day, February the 14, 2018. Mm -hmm. The Gupta's luxury family estate in Saxonwald, a very high-end neighborhood in Johannesburg, was swooped upon by authorities. The trio of leading brothers in that family, Rajesh, Atul and Ajay, all fleeing the country. We haven't seen them since and our law enforcement agencies and our national authorities have been pursuing them over alleged state capture that is stealing a sl slew of money from the state through various uh, mechanisms and various shenanigans leveraging that relationship they had with Zuma and his family. All right. Rajesh, uh, there have been so many hearings of the judicial investigation into, uh, as Aaron put it, state capture. How deep-rooted was their influence in the Jacob Zuma government? And, uh, you know, it's said that they decided on uh, ministerial appointments uh, and, and really went to that extent of influence. Well, the state capture, there is a judicial probe that's happening headed uh, by the 
uh, uh, the deputy head of the, the Supreme Court of South Africa, uh, the, the Zondo Commission. And there have been testimonies by various people who've spoken about the kind of influence they had, not just in uh, creating policy, but also choosing who would be part of the cabinet, who were the people who were reluctant to follow their uh, uh, cues and who, who had to be removed from there. And also it's estimated that about uh, 32 billion US dollars, they're accused of looting that and um, moving out of the country. So the scale, it, it uh, uh, affects every public sector enterprise of the South African government, uh, from coal to aviation uh, to mining. The entire sweep uh, was involved this in, uh, uh, with, with uh, this. And it's really the, the, the taxpayers of South Africa whose money this was, uh, and uh, 32 billion US dollars is, is what they're accused of uh, looting. Wow. How much of a role, Erin, did the 2019 sanctions on the brothers by the U.S. Treasury, uh, you know, similar action by the U.K. authorities and then the recent uh, FATF action on the UAE play in the arrest of uh, two of the three brothers? Well, I think we need to distinguish the U.S. Treasury, of course, sanctioning uh, the Gupta brothers and their close associate, Salim Essa. And that was based, we understand, on information gathered from a singular hard drive, which mm. drew information from the Sahara Computers server. Of course, the Gupta brothers arrived in South Africa in the 1990s. They kind of got their shoe in with government supplying laptops and building up Sahara computers. And from there, their empire really just mushroomed to the point where they were alleged running meetings out of our president's very office. Uh, so the U.S. Treasury uh, action, the action by the U.K. authorities, and then the work that the South African authorities have been doing uh, with partners in the UAE to get the Guptas extradited are relatively separate, although, of course, all based on the same facts, the same evidence, which at least to the U.S. Treasury, the U.K. authorities, and uh, the South African National Prosecuting Authority provides concrete basis uh, for charging two of the three brothers. I think one of the questions that many South Africans will be asking is why has RJ, uh, considered the patriarch of the family, not been issued a red notice and uh, is not in line to be indicted too? It's only Artul and Rajesh Tony who have been charged in relation to actually a pretty small matter of corruption in comparison with the figure that uh, um, Rajesh Sundaram cited there. And of course, uh, the figures we know, uh, as he said, the alleged corruption and state capture the Guptas committed uh, in cahoots with the very top echelons of South African government and the head of state ran across different state enterprises, aviation, military, rail, uh, infrastructure across the board. And, and the actual matter that they're being hooked in here on is relatively small. But if it gets them back, I think for a lot of South Africans, that might be the best thing. Okay, we're almost out of time, but I just have, want to get a quick take from both of you on whether or not the authorities actually know where this money is invested by the Gupta brothers. The authorities in South Africa, are they hopeful that that will be returned to South Africa? Erin? I think hopeful, yes. As for the plausibility of accruing all of the stone and loot, I think that's almost impossible. Uh, some of the financial laundering pro processes and financial flows have been traced with the help of bank records, uh, but there's plenty that's ferreted away in places I'm sure we'll never see uh, or catch. But if, if we can get some of the billions back into the fiscus and back into building the country and providing services to the people on the ground, uh, it will have been worth all of this time and effort and the many years of uh, struggle which have been involved and are undoubtedly going to continue. Well, the downfall of yet another business empire. Erin, Rajesh, thank you both so much for joining us today. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.